Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today, a hot topic that has plagued the trucking industry for years now, is there a driver shortage? The reason I'm making this video today is because a piece of news came out today that, well, pissed me off would be an understatement. So let's chat about it. Ready? Let's go. So of course, first and foremost, where does this whole myth of a driver shortage come from? Well, according to freight waves, and I quote, generally speaking, the driver shortage myth stems from larger trucking companies that find it difficult to recruit drivers into their fleet operations. After all, fleets have to compete for truck drivers with other trucking companies. In addition, some licensed truck drivers go to work in other sectors of the economy, like construction and warehousing, but the fleets also have to compete against the growth of independent operators. Now, something that I was not aware of, and it shocked me, is the fact that the American trucking associations actually breeds this whole narrative of a driver shortage. And part of the reason for this is that their members consist of mid-size and large fleets. Now, according to Freight Waves, the ATA's membership dues are indexed based on company size. For example, a large fleet with 4 billion in revenue will pay a much larger fee than a carrier with 50 million in revenue. Moreover, the ATA is a trade association and lobbying organization which seeks to influence Congress when it considers legislation that impacts the trucking industry. As the ATA encourages Congress to pass laws and appropriations that fund employee driver training and recruitment programs while minimizing regulation that favor larger trucking fleets that employ drivers rather than independent owner operators, it helps to paint a picture of a perpetual driver shortage. After all, if Congress realized how fast capacity enters the market from independent operators when there is a capacity crunch, it would mitigate the need for employee driver recruitment and retention entitlement programs. And this actually pissed me off because while I was very aware of the fact that the driver shortage narrative is a myth, what shocked me is that at the end of it all, at the core of this narrative is of course money. It shouldn't shock me, but it did. Now I started digging into what the ATA had to say about this and they claimed that there is a driver shortage for over 15 years now and if the trend continues by 2028, there will be a need of 160,000 drivers, right? Now, they did end up responding to that Freight Waves article when it came out, and I guess it really hit them or rubbed them the wrong way, being accused of finding benefit for themselves when perpetuating this story. And what did they say? Well, they said that demographics tell the story, and they said that the aging workforce, barriers to entry for younger workers, underrepresentation of women, and lifestyle preferences are the reason for this shortage. They also say, and I quote, the existence of a driver shortage is also corroborated by microeconomic indicators showing across the board pay increases as fleets look into recruiting and retaining drivers. Now, this was in 2023, towards the tail end of 2023. And they say that according to the U.S. Department of Labor, hourly earnings in for hire general freight have risen 23.5%. And they say that there was an 18% increase in annual compensation for truckload drivers between 2019 and 2021. And that between 2020 and 2021, over 90% of responding truckload carriers rose driver pay in 2021 when the market was the best it has ever been and offered an average increase of 10.9%. And then they asked the question, why would truckload carriers increase pay if labor supply isn't tight in 2021? Well, I'm happy to answer that question for the ATA since they asked. There is a problem with a retention of drivers, absolutely, but that's the fault of carriers who offer the world to these folks and then screw them over any chance they get by not paying all miles, deductions, late fees, 
blah, blah, blah. But that doesn't mean there is a driver shortage problem. There is a morale problem and for good reason as well. Now I have a guy on my team that started with us about four months ago and he has been screwed over so badly by other carriers that it took him about two months to trust us despite the fact that every payment was on time. There were no deductions. All miles are paid via odometer readings, no chargebacks, constant communication. And can you blame him for being wary? No, you can't because he has been screwed over so badly by other carriers. So why is this whole narrative such a big problem? Well, number one, as we are all well aware, there is not a shortage problem. There is an overcapacity problem right now. And this overcapacity of drivers and trucks is what's giving the green light to shippers to cut those rates. But what's more is these folks who end up entering the market, they, if they don't know better, they think they're entering a market of scarcity, which is absolutely not the case, especially right now. But the narrative continues, and this is where we go to the article that was released today. Now, recently, the FMCSA launched a pilot program for under 21 year old drivers to solve this whole driver shortage problem. Now, the program was a complete bust and participation was dismal, which is not surprising considering the current state of the industry. Landline says, and I quote, the under 21 pilot program was launched in 2022 based on the premise that there is a shortage of truck drivers. Current regulations require truck drivers who cross state lines to be at least 21 years old. In-state commercial drivers can start at 18. In April, it was reported that the FMCSA has received only 113 applications from motor carriers. Only 34 of those carriers have been successfully approved to participate in the program. The program was set up to accommodate 1,000 motor carriers and 3,000 under 21 drivers. Now, that poses a question. Doesn't that already show you that there is no problem with driver shortage? Well, unfortunately, ATA thinks that that's not the problem. The problem is that the requirements are too stringent and that's why carriers are not participating. Now, according to Landline, as directed by Congress, inward facing cameras will no longer be required for participation in this program. In a notice scheduled to be published tomorrow, May 14th, the FMCSA announced revisions to the pilot program's requirements for motor carriers. The revisions are aimed at making it easier for motor carriers and 18, 19, and 20 year old drivers to sign up for the program after an extremely underwhelming start. I mean, you can't make this up. So for those of you who have been asking me to talk on this issue, I hope it answers the question of whether there is a driver shortage problem. No, there is no issue with driver shortage. On the contrary, there is an oversupply of drivers, carriers, trucks, and everything else. And the FMCSA together with the ATA are basically making this issue even worse right now. But again, I'm always open to opposing comments and opinions because that's how we learn and i'm very curious to hear what your thoughts are on this issue anyway guys thank you so much for watching i'm wishing you a fantastic rest of your week stay safe stay healthy and keep learning i'll see you in the next video